In this video, we're going to take a look at Gibbs free energy and its relationship to equilibrium as well as the reaction quotient. So let's start out by taking a look at graphs that look at the Gibbs energy versus uh, the bottom axis here is the composition of the mixture. So if we looked at a reaction uh, over time, so this is a reaction, say, A to B, um, and it establishes an equilibrium, then um, as we kind of take a look and as the time of uh, reaction begins, the Gibbs free energy is going to change as the ratio of the reactants to the products changes. So if we take a look here, we've got at the beginning one mole of reactant and zero moles of products. And for this particular reaction, for this forward reaction here, all through this section, Gibbs energy is decreasing. So this would be spontaneous for the forward, I'm just gonna write FWR for forward reaction. Uh, so for reversible reactions, the interesting piece here is that the Gibbs energy, the, the minimum value is gonna be reached at the point of equilibrium. So this is where delta G is equal to zero. Okay, and this is where equilibrium is defined. Um, after this point, you can see in this reaction, Gibbs energy is going up or increasing. So this would be non-spontaneous for the forward reaction. Okay, so in uh, essentially in this graph in A, so it's all this section from the beginning up to this composition of mixture at equilibrium, we would say that the Gibbs energy is decreasing, so it's spontaneous, uh, the reactants will um, decrease and the products will increase. Then we hit equilibrium, so this is where Q is equal to K, and this is where the Gibbs energy is at a value of zero. And then beyond that in B, this is where the reverse reaction is favored because for where the forward reaction Gibbs energy is going up. So that means for the reverse reaction, the Gibbs energy would be going down. Uh, so it's non-spontaneous in the forward direction. So this is kind of how we interpret these sort of graphs when it comes to Gibbs energy and its relationship to the equilibrium. Now, there are some variations to this graph and it is essentially depends on the delta G value for the forward reaction. So if we have a reaction where the delta G is equal to zero for the forward reaction, then essentially we get the equilibrium happening at the halfway point here. So forward reaction and reverse reaction are essentially equivalent to each other. When we have for a forward reaction, the delta G is less than zero, this means that it's spontaneous for our forward reaction. Um, we're going to see that position of the equilibrium shifted a bit more towards the products. And so we get the more of the composition happening in a spontaneous direction and less happening in the non-spontaneous direction. And then if delta G is greater than zero for the forward reaction, we essentially have the reverse here. So equilibrium is happening closer to the reactants um, and we have a very little sort of window here where delta G is spontaneous and the majority of it is where delta G is non-spontaneous. So you can see variations of this graph depending on uh, the different sort of delta G values for the forward reaction. Now we've seen in a different video where we can calculate the Gibbs or the standard Gibbs energy if we know the equilibrium constant or uh, vice versa. So that's related by delta G is equal to negative RT times the ln of K. Um, this first equation here is actually how we derive this second equation. So the first equation, a delta G, this is at any point in time so not necessarily at equilibrium, is equal to the standard Gibbs energy 
Um, and plus the RT, so R is our gas constant of 8.31 joules per Kelvin per mole. Our temperature is in Kelvin. And then ln of Q, so Q being our reaction quotient. So what's nice about this equation is that we can figure out the Gibbs energy at any point in an equilibrium system if we know what the reaction quotient is um, as well as the standard Gibbs energy for a reaction. Now, the way that we go from equation number one to equation number two is at equilibrium, Gibbs' uh, energy is equal to zero. So we're setting this equation here equal to zero. Um, oh, times ln of Q. And then at equilibrium, Q is equal to K. So if you solved for the delta G naught, you would get this equation here. So that's how the two sort of interchange with one another. So how does this all fit together? Well, let's look at an example. We have a synthesis of ammonia equilibrium here, and we're given some values. We're given a delta H, delta S, and a temperature. For part A, we're asked to find the standard Gibbs energy change. So doing that, we can just use our equation delta H minus T delta S, now, being careful that we are converting everything to kilojoules or everything to joules, doesn't matter which way we go about this, but I'm gonna convert everything to kilojoules. Um, so subbing in our values here, this one's gonna be 0 0.202. Um, and doing the math, we get negative uh, 31.804, or if we're rounding that off to sig digs, we're gonna have negative 32 kilojoules per mole. So because delta G is negative, this means that it's a spontaneous reaction. Um, part B asks us to calculate the equilibrium constant. So doing that, we know delta G naught is negative RT times ln of K. Um, and we can sub in all our values. Again, we want to make sure the units are consistent here because R is in joules and our delta G is in kilojoules. Doesn't matter which way we go, but I'm going to go to joules this time just to make it easy. Uh, we're still using 298 Kelvin. So if we rearrange this and then we solve for K, uh, we should get... Let me see, I got 3.8 times 10 to the 5. Um, so it asks us to also state what we expect for the, uh, whether we expect the forward reaction to be favorable. We have a really large K, so yes, definitely. Uh, the forward reaction is very favorable. Okay. Part C then. Uh, says that we're given a reaction quotient of Q of 1 times 10 to the 6, and we want to determine the delta G at that point. So we're going to use our second equation here, uh, delta G naught plus RT long Q, and essentially we're just plugging our values in. Um, again, being mindful, we've got kilojoules here and we've got joules here. So... Um, again, doesn't matter which way we go, but I want my delta G in kilojoules, so I'm actually going to just convert everything to kilojoules here. Uh, so I'm going to take my 8.31 and divide it by 1,000. We got 298. And then we've got the ln of 1 times 10 to the 6. Okay. And if we do that math and we round that off to sig digs, I get 2.4 kilojoules per mole. And so because the delta G at this point is positive, it means at this point in time, it is a non-spontaneous reaction. So that's how you use those three equations as well as to understand and interpret the graphs related to Gibbs energy and equilibrium. That's it for this video. We'll see you in the next one.